247 Niger.tv with the interview segment. We have here in the house the people we spoke about that you'd really love to see in Nigeria. And here by my right immediately, I would just want to do some honor and you know, just shift a little from you to the very handsome young man we have right over there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the ex Nance president, Mr. Inyabong. You're welcome, sir. I think you're living on something there. Are you serious? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Let's just do that very well. And you know, you know, you know, that's the part where everybody wanted to hear. Now, this is the most beautiful part I just bumped into. The. Can you do the introduction? Special assistant to this. <laughs> Special assistant to our executive governor here in Uyo was streaming 247 Niger TV live. And this is beautiful, and it's an honor to have, her, to have him here. On our show. The drama is mine. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, sir. And right beside me is the SUG president of the University of Wiyo. I'm talking about Comrade Lucky Imo. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a big honor to visit you, sir. We have these great media leaders, we have these great student activists. Um, we're going to be talking students, we're going to be talking everything students. So much came out from Mio on June 12. Mm -hmm. some, some persons call it the Mio uprising. <laughs> <laughs> the return of June 12. You know, June 12 has never really had great memories in Nigeria. Whenever we call the, I mean, the dates June 12, mm -hmm. bad things come to our mind. It played, it played back in the year um, this year. Played back in the year this year. We're going to be discussing June 12 on this edition of Front Lines. Well, come to think of it. With all that we know was involved, I am really thinking if we really know anything. That's where we would start off with you, sir. We learned that on June 12th, it's all over the news and it's what everyone had been talking about. That there was this breakout in school, some riot that had to do with the students needing to have the management attend to them. And due to some things that were not properly handled, they escalated to something else. I really do not understand if it was within the school or it was hijacked by outsiders. I really want to know, as the SUG president, what really took place? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, before we talk about June 12th, we, it's important to talk about before June 12th. That's good. Yeah, which led to June 12th. Uh, it was just a very uh, simple thing. Nobody thought it was going to lead to something like that. What happened in June 12th was not anticipated in any way. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, as I know about the students that I oversee, what happened was as a result of a transport system that was introduced uh, in school. Uh, some faculties were moved to the, uh, the school's permanent site at, at Use. And uh, then there was this need, because the number increased, there was this need for a shuttle system to put in place for us to carry them. And, uh, that was what led to the introduction of that scheme. But the student did not agree with the, the price. So we tried to communicate that disagreement to the management. And unfortunately, there were some issues. Management were not, uh, they didn't, you know, we did that through the deal. But from subsequent meetings we had after the incident, we discovered that the issue was not properly communicated to members of the management. Really? Okay. Uh, June 12th came. No, I, I like the fact that you're talking about the build up to June 12th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll just take you up quickly on that. He said the issues were, uh, came up, the introduction of the um, prizes, no, the transportation. On, on, on transportation. Mm -hmm. And you said you communicated to the administration, to the management, that that wasn't favorable, that students did not like it. As a student in our leader, you let um, your ex co your union members yes. to communicate that to the yes. management? Yes, we did. What, did what, what happened was that there was a committee that was set up. We need to okay. know most of these things. Because right. We've had uh, various uh, uh, kind of stories about this and everything. Okay. There was a committee that was set up by management. It wasn't uh, the students. Was there any students member yes, of that yes, committee? Yes, myself and the director of transport okay. of the union. How, how many times did the committee meet? Uh, met just twice. Were recommendations made? Uh, no. What happened was at the level of the committee, when the issue of pricing came up, we had told them that uh, 15 naira was going to be the idea. But there were there are a lot of other things that happened at the level of the committee which we won't want to get. And this committee 
was made up of six members. Okay. So two members from the union and then uh, four members from, 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 from the, the management staff. staff. Uh, yes, yes, from the uh, university staff. Okay. So naturally you would, you, would not, you would see that it wasn't really balanced. Okay. So when the issue of arguing over a position came, uh, our position words, was, was overwhelmed. Okay. In other words, students who yes. were not properly yeah. represented yes. in the committee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But at the end, recommendations were made. Yeah, we, I, I, I didn't see the report of the committee. We, as a member we of the were committee. called. Yes, as a member of the committee, we were called after the incident of June 12th okay. to come and sign the committee report. Is that how things are done? Exactly. So those are some of the other things that the public didn't know about this thing because there's, there's been a lot of hammers on my head. President, we heard you did this, you accepted, you collected so much money. Okay. That is not the truth. Let us see it this way. At that particular point when students had to come up and then riot and probably protest that they did not, uh, it wasn't favorable for them, you know, the price that was given. Was this in any way, did, did the SUG know about this? Where did you back up this uh, peaceful protest or something? No, we, we, you know, where students go take to the street, it's very difficult. What I did that morning, because we didn't see it coming actually, what I told the student was that, see, we've tried to see how management can uh, accept our own input on this thing, and they are not doing that. Let's see how we can avoid the transport scheme. It's not compulsory. Let's see how we can avoid the transport scheme, use other means to go for our classes, and that will send a message both to management and to the transport companies that say we are not in agreement with this because I and the student leadership we've tried to tell them that no the price was too much. Yeah. So at that point in time, you know, riots uh, or protests is uh, something that is very delicate. Yeah. So when we came that morning on, of twelve, they we we came and then just a handful of students really which would have been controlled. Okay, before we, before we go to June 12th, I want to bring in the former Lands president in yeah. at this moment. You've been a student in your leader. Is there anything that could have been done at, as a that morning, in, in your opinion, to forestall what happened on June 12th? Well, so much could have been done before. Very few things would have been done on the morning. Okay. And fewer things would have been done after the morning. Now, you see, which is why part of the things I hope to do in my office is to train our people about crisis intervention and management. Yeah. You see, you can't run away from crisis. We're in a studio now. You know, I'm not sure that you need to have a fire extinguisher. Okay. I, I don't know if you do. <laughs> because you don't run away from trouble. You're working with electricity, you're working. Someone could trip over something. Someone, if he's a smoker, could forget that he's in a studio and he smokes and the sparks from the cigarette will just uh, and everybody will run around. You know, people will be confused as to should we use sand, should we use water, what should we do? So how many Nigerians, you know, it's just now, it's not about the students of the University of Rio, how many Nigerians know crisis management? But overseas you find people, you find very little children understand that if I find fire, I press on the fire alarm, I get a fire extinguisher and can operate it. Half of the drivers we have in this country don't know how to operate the fire extinguishers they have. They only carry for road safety. They are willing to show the road safety. <laughs> they don't know that it expires. So the issue at the crux of it is crisis, intervention, and management. So you can lay blame on the table of anyone. You know, we had floods last year, and so it took all of us unawares. You know, people didn't know what to do. But we had a worst case of flood in China. You saw what people agreed. You know, so that that's the difference. So I'm taking a position of no victor, no vanquish. I'm taking a position of let's not lay blames. Incidentally, as a lawyer, I appreciate the fact that the, the matter surrounding this issue is in court. So I also must be careful in my comments on it so that it doesn't become subjudice. Okay. You know? But on the whole, the issue is, can we learn from the story of June 12? First and foremost, as students, next time we want to embark on a protest, that's why there's leadership. You see, we're not a parental kingdom. Every man with his cap. We must learn to respect the people we've kept in positions of authority. Yes, they didn't listen to Lock Imaya, they didn't listen to their president, but at the end, it's still Lock Imaya only to speak for them. Because every engineering student, every science student can't speak for themselves. 
That's true. So when you refuse to listen to Lucky Moya, who came out to ask you, please, can we resolve this matter at this point? Can I speak to can I speak to the management? Can I talk to this? And you didn't listen to him. You had demobilized him. You know, you are taking his power base from him. It's not that his SDG president doesn't mean he represents the students every time. Because when he's sitting with his girlfriend, if he has one, or when he's singing in church, and he's a, a chorister, he's still a SDG president, but he's not doing the work of students there. No, so at any people. point, at any point, Lucky cannot have the backing of students. He's no longer SDG president. Yeah. So during that crisis, did the students allow the elected representative to speak as he should have spoken? This is a, it begins to lead, talk about the issues of leadership. Are we accepting recognized leadership? Yeah. The issues of responsibilities. We have parents in school. The vice chancellor is the mother. You know, the dean of students is the father. You know, we have deans. Did they play their role as parents? You know, are we, has democracy taken its roots in, in universities okay. where the lecturers should see the students as the actual okay. ownership of this process? Okay. The university is not a place you go to work. The university is an extension of the lecturer's family. So anything you would not do to your child, don't do it to another person's child. Mm -hmm. So those are the ethos that we are looking at. Those are the things we are seeing. Those are the things we want to say. Where were these things lacking on June 12th? And not to apportion them, because like Jeff Kennedy said, our task is not to fix the blame for the past, but they've set the cost for the future. Mm -hmm. June 12th is history, but will there be another June 12th? Cheers. June 12th has been there before, in case you didn't know. It was there in the days of Onofio. It was still June 12th. It wasn't 2013. It was 2003. June 12 it was. But it wasn't that date. No, it wasn't that date. Okay, so then why you hear about it today is because it happened on June 12. Mm. It's because someone died. Oh, because one of your got prosecuted, he did not die. But the same issues. Yes. Can we look at the remote and immediate causes of the crisis in Yulio? Mm. It is funding. How many people in Akwaibom are willing to say that, look, this is the only Federal, truly federal tertiary institution we have. Kaduna State has more than eight. As a former dance person, I can say that. So how many people are willing to stand up and speak? When the president came here in 2010, I refused to talk politics. The only thing I asked the president was, the only thing the federal secretary of dance is the University of Europe by virtue of my being a president. And there are special interventions you is here to get his take-off grant. There are special interventions you you should get. It has not gotten. Your Excellency, please, I ask that you look into it. That was 2010. Aquabum stakeholders were there. His Excellency, the governor, was there. And he caused the president to notice. The president said he was going to review the spending template. He was going to ask the Minister of Education to look into it. That was in 2010. And I'm very sure looking into it. Yes. So the issue is, how many people in that hall re-echoed what the Mabobong said? No, it was a student's matter. We're talking politics. It was here that the president, the first time a group of people asked the president to run for president, was in a Bible. So, yes, the, we, we left issues that concerned us, and we spoke, yes, we spoke politics, I agree. But having run and won, have we gone back to revisit the issue? I don't have access to the villa. I'm a former Nancy president, and I remain a comrade. But people have access to the villa. We have a quite of indigenous as very close friends to the president. Who has been that person who has mentioned to say, Mr. President, please, can we look at the University of York? We have established six new universities, 1.5 billion naira have been given to those schools. Take notes. Those schools are yet to admit or convoke anybody. But 1.5 billion given. How much has been given to the University of Rio that has admitted and produced more than 100,000 people functioning well in Nigeria? Questions to be answered. It is not about who was to blame. It is that the, the child is born in the marketplace, you can't ask the mother to close her legs. It's already happened. So what do we learn from June 12? On this medium, I'm excited about what you're doing. What do we learn from it? Luckily, the ASU strike has come to shell the because everyone is at home, so the union students are not feeling very bad. So how do we prepare that as we come back, we will learn lessons, students will learn lessons the next time you want to mobilize. You are careful. In NANS, we talk about three C's. That's our modus operandi. First is consultation. Second is consolidation. Then there is a dash before the last C which is confrontation. What is the level of consultation? Did you consolidate upon that consultation before you went for confrontation? And mind you, within a democracy anywhere in the world, when people gather, whether it is called peaceful, it is confrontation. 
Take notice, when Barack Obama was contesting for the presidency of America with McCain, uh, Pauline, the vice presidential candidate, was a governor of the state. Okay. And she was going to another state for campaigns. And a group of about 100 people stood on the road. The difference is the methods we use. Do you know what the CIA and FBI did? They stood among the protesters. And they did not ask them to leave. The conventional police stood by the side. When it was time for Sarah Palin to pass, they just didn't see people in the, the protesters were fighting. But those with CIA agents, they just shifted and a road was created in between she drove past. That was crisis management, breaking a crisis. Did you get it? Mm, now, if Lucky was armed sufficiently, and that is why when we elect leadership, we must build capacity. That's true. Every election of an SUG has less than 20% of the students' population voting. Why? Because the students, immediately you declare that it will be lecture free day, the girls run back either to their homes to meet daddy or daddy. <laughs> the guys run out to, to, to hustle for money. So you need less than 20% to select leadership for 100%. So what it means that the first thing the SUG president needs to do is to popularize himself among the 80% who did not vote for him. They didn't vote for him because they hated him, but they didn't vote for him because they didn't vote for anybody. Now, so what is the capacity building that you transform a psychologist to an administrator capable of managing crisis? You see, so those are the things that have popped up as a result of June 12. June 12. And those are the things we need to look at in preparation to forestall another June 12. Wow. Okay, still on to front lines, right here on 247 TV. We'll go on a very short break where we discussing students' crisis management and, of course, the union issues. We've got a very short break, I'm going to return and we will be talking about the 44 students we we do as to in police custody. Frontline will return after this cut. It's really an honor to be with you no, here in the house. And still with still here with Comrade Ini Emma Boanden, Comrade Loki Imoya. This was the ex nans president and this is the president SUG president of the University of Rio. And we're talking the June twelfth crisis that happened in the University of Rio. Previously we've been with them and he's spoken greatly on what has happened and what we can learn from it. And seriously it's been a great one to discuss here because apart from seeing the fact that we had crisis, I really love the fact that we could see where we're going with it because I remember a time I spoke about that with someone, I was telling someone that I believe that from the ashes will arise a greater union. Okay. So right now there has been a lot involved on that day, there were a lot that happened that day and I learned it's been on the news that some students lost their lives and I really want to confirm from the people that would speak about the university, for example, talking about the SUG president, what really went down and then is it really true that students lost their lives? Can we just ask them because we've heard that three, some is some quarters, four, mm -hmm. and then officially on the papers, one, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. let's in the true state right now. Yes, uh, one comrade can see because he is he's late now. A mm -hmm. uh, 200 level student from zoology okay. died mm -hmm. uh, as a result of the crisis. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we know about the uh, incident that happened after that. Some nuns comrades who were coming for intervention died on their way. So, may their souls rest in peace. So, officially, only one student from the University, University of Missouri lost his life. Yes. Yes. And then I heard also, as much as uh, this whole thing happened that uh, the riot was hijacked and much later the police had to be brought in to calm stuff down and that students were asked to vacate the premises of the school but when the police came around it's like arrests had to be made what's really about that and is it really true? Yes, it's uh, also true that um, a handful of students were also arrested on the, on the day of the incident uh, but you know like uh, my senior comrades say, we don't want to really dwell so much on what has happened, but there is progress. So, yeah. 
I will be talking a little bit about the progress that we've made since then. Beautiful. And our daughter students have been arraigned in court yes. for charges ranging from arson, murder, stealing, looting, and all of that. So, I don't know, I would like to take you up on that as a lawyer and also a comrade. Do you think it's really right for, would a student during this kind of crisis kill a fellow student? Well, everything is possible. What if um, both of them had um, a girlfriend's call? Okay. It is possible, theoretically, okay. but um, it's a matter within the framework of the court, so we must be careful and guided. Okay. There is a second, to my knowledge, there is a second autopsy. Now, you see, that's a game, crisis management. When the boy was shot, hmm, people should have known enough to take him to a government hospital for resuscitation, and if he was confirmed dead, an autopsy should have been done. The caliber of bullets that penetrated his body will determine whether it's a civilian armor or it's a military armor. Now, for example, I'm not certain that any student has access to AK-47. Okay. They will have access to smaller guns. And mm, look me, so. You know, so, but, but let's leave that. The, the issue I've been working with him on, we're in line with civil liberties organization, the president's faculty of law and Association, has been, some of them have been arraigned, you know, they were arraigned procedurally in the magistrate court which declined jurisdiction and remanded them in custody. So what it means is that uh, DPP would advise and proper charges would be raised in a court of competent jurisdiction being a high court. I have had meetings with the Attorney General who has, um, who has responded as a father, you know, and has offered legal palliatives which uh, we are yet to meet. In fact, when I did a meeting with the Vice Chancellor of the University of you still in furtherance to this. Okay. Now, there's a procedure called the Knowledge Procedure, which uh, is the power of the Attorney General to terminate, uh, to terminate proceedings, criminal proceedings, because a crime is committed against the state, not an individual. But again, he must exercise discretion in the exercise of that conduct. Okay. You know? So, we are still looking around the clock. We in the prisons the other day. Uh, yes. Okay, a lot of them have been. A lot of them have been released on bail. Some have secured bail, but the conditions of bail are humongous. So we are looking at how to vary those conditions of bail. Uh, that's in the palliative, varying the bail, getting everybody out first so that we can start talking like human beings. But the main thing is to appeal to the states okay. to see if they can look the other way. But in looking the other way, we will give a stern warning because we will not condone, and I say that conscious that I've been a student, I've been a student activist and I'm now in government. We will not condone any act of criminality. Some people undertook the criminal act of burning down university structure and facility, burning down records, and cutting away, stealing. If the state, if and when the state decides to grant pardon and clemency, we will reiterate, which is why we are going on school talks from my office that criminality will not be condoned. If you are a student, we we'll try you in court, you will be convicted, and you will for it. But let us take this as the first warning. But again, we are not yet there. So while the lot have left, have met their bail conditions and have left the prison, a few of them are still there. And we are still working to ensure they are released back to their parents first before we can begin to engage with the states to see the conditions at which the states would provide for granting them uh, that knowledge. Yeah. Please let me, let me quickly say a little bit because I know students who, who will be getting to connect with us will want to know things that the union has been doing. Okay. So you know, yes, we, we thank God that he came uh, on board at, at this time. We have also engaged with management on the matter of uh, the students who have been in, in prison. Okay. And uh, the vice chancellor was also willing to talk to the attorney general. Okay. Which she confirmed that she did. Okay. Which has led to most of the things that uh, uh, my senior colleague is talking about. And also, we engaged the services of some uh, lawyers, like the CLO, is talking about civil liberty organization, yeah. and uh, some lawyers at King Banks uh, Chambers. Yeah. And some of the parents also got individual lawyers. Okay. So at 
this point, uh, right now, I came from to, to this place from the prisons. We have, uh, I think, about 10 people still remaining. Okay, just say so We have just say uh, Yes, okay. more than 30 have been released. So that's just, that's for, just for the parents to try to uh, so fulfill the bail conditions. Okay. Okay. She was high, and like you said, the, the lawyers involved tried to vary the, the bail conditions so that the parents would be able to, to meet up. And also, uh, a meeting we had with uh, management, some set of concerns were placed before the management okay. so as to make sure the incidents of June 12 does not repeat itself again. Okay. Because we discovered that it was as a result of a strained relationship between management and the leadership of the student. Mm, that's, where, that's, that. where, that's where I wanted to come in. Yes. I was just thinking, after all of this, what happened that day and then, you know, like an ending note, how are we really trying to see that this does not repeat again? If something like this happens, that students and management have a better relationship where we can express ourselves and then get our leaders, or would I say the management, to be able to understand our plight, you know, as students, and then be able to, you know, just converse with us and get things going good. Yes. Say I was a student, because I was, here in the same university of you. So how are we looking at it, please? Uh, that's a process, that's a process. Um, you see, the truth is, diplomacy is not worked on the media. Okay. The duty of the media is to report bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because when, when a dog bites a man, it's, it's, it's a news. But when a man bites a dog, so for papers to sell, the media must, in fact, engineer men to bite dogs. <laughs> so peace is not found via the media. We will only report peace when it has been achieved through the media. So consolidatory efforts are being made. Okay. You know, internal rearrangements are being made. My duty is not to inter intervene. No, my duty is not to interfere, but to intervene, intervene. and facilitate that process. So I'm sure that by the time management and students are right on track, we'll be able to come back together yeah. and sit together, you know, to say that, look, peace has come. And you do not know the true worth of peace until crisis has come to yes. test the peace. So the peace they are trying to broker, you won't know the true worth of that peace until someday a crisis and disagreement between management and students comes and they are able to manage it without another crisis coming up. So that, that's when we talk about you know, we talk about evaluation, we talk about impact. So the outcome, the output of what you're going to see is that students' management can come together and school will resume. The outcome of that will be that school will resume normally, you know, we will be certain that uh, people are not overcharged and all that, people will be released. That's the outcome. Mm -hmm. you know, but when you're looking at the impact, it is to say four years from now, you know, in June 12, in 2017, we ask ourselves and say, June 12, 2019, this happened. Between now and then, how many disagreements have management and students had? How many have been resolved and they can be? That is when you can evaluate the impact. So and that is what they are working on. That is what we must work on when we live here. Yes. And that is why you must release me. Please, before you release me, I want to say a little bit because uh, a lot has been uh, going on since the. Uh, uh, since the, uh, two, two Tuesdays ago, okay. I uh, we called for a roundtable discussion with management, mm -hmm. and they we tried to place a couple of concerns before them, like the students being released from from prison. Mm -hmm. uh, we also wanted management to uh, try to do one or two things, and also the student who died, just in a way to uh, honor him, you know. So management have also been willing to say, okay, we are going to immortalize Kingsley, this Kingsley modernity. So which also shows that uh, management are willing to learn from the incidents and change and relate very well with uh, the students. Okay. So that, you know, if ASU strike gets off now and the uh, University of Ohio students are saying they will be the ones raising. People in management, they are getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be at home. So we want, we want uh, progress to be made so that the students will come back to class. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Go ahead. And I am sure that with everything I have heard from both of you and everything we've discussed on here, yeah. how the processes are going, I believe it is going to be okay 
very soon. I really believe that we will be able to take from what happened and to make sure that any other time something like this comes up, we manage it properly. And I really love everything you said because there's really a lot to learn from crisis management very, very important. And that is how far it has been, that's how good we've gone. I am so happy Nigeria that you stayed here with us. It's still been Comrade Ini in Melbourne and Comrade Lucky in Moore. And we've been here on this interview segment discussing UNIO and the crisis that happened on June 12, 2013. Thank you for staying with us. It's still in our Alphonsus and... And Courage. And the front line continues with the sports, front line sports. Of course, David De Genius and Greg James. Uh, on standby on queue. I'm very sure you're going to have a very lovely time out today. We'll be right back. <laughs>